The Orchard Keeper is Cormac McCarthy's debut novel, published in 1965. Set in the small Tennessee mountain town of Red Branch between World War I and World War II, the story delves into the complex relationship between a young boy and the man responsible for his father's death. It explores themes such as the untamed wilderness and its chaotic nature, the perpetuation of violence in cyclical patterns, and the encroachment of modernity. In this rustic setting, a young boy named John Wesley Ratner resides near Red Branch, surrounded by the mountains. Arthur Ownby, a reclusive individual, lives on the outskirts of town next to a rundown orchard. Marion Silder, an outlaw, also calls the area home, engaging in bootlegging activities during the era of prohibition. Marion operates a speedy car to transport illegal whiskey across rural Tennessee. Alongside his companions, he uses the vehicle to pick up unsuspecting young men and women, exploiting their fear for his own amusement and coercing the women into sexual encounters. During one of his journeys, Marion picks up a hitchhiker named Kenneth Ratner, who unbeknownst to Marion, is John's father. Kenneth, intending to rob and kill Marion for his money, launches an attack. However, Marion gains the upper hand in the struggle and ultimately strangles Kenneth to death. Fearing the consequences of being implicated in a murder, Marion ponders the fate of Kenneth's body. Upon discovering the apple orchard adjacent to Arthur's residence, Marion believes that the dilapidated site will remain undisturbed. He hides the lifeless body among the decaying apple trees, concealing it within a gravel pit. Arthur eventually stumbles upon Kenneth's deceased body but refrains from involving the authorities. Instead, he becomes fixated on the decomposing corpse, regularly cutting down tree branches and crafting wreaths to adorn the pit. John and his mother, Mildred, gradually come to accept Kenneth's inexplicable disappearance, unknowing of the true fate that befell him. Assuming Kenneth is dead, Mildred compels her son, John, to swear an oath to seek out and avenge his father's murderer. John is plagued by uncertainty about how he will carry out this task. Meanwhile, Marion continues his bootlegging activities, acquiring a shipment near Arthur's residence one evening. In the midst of the transaction, Marion witnesses Arthur shooting holes into a government-installed tank on his property. Concerned that he may become a target, Marion discreetly slips away while Arthur observes his departure. On another occasion, Arthur finds himself in his orchard during the evening hours. From there, he witnesses Marion losing control of his vehicle and crashing into a nearby creek. In the vicinity, John has recently set traps with hopes of selling animal hides for profit. As he checks his traps, he hears the sound of the car crash and ventures closer to investigate. Unaware of Marion's involvement in his father's death, John offers assistance, extending a helping hand. Similarly, Marion remains oblivious to John's true identity as Kenneth's son. Grateful for John's intervention, Marion takes him to his house to dry off and warm up. As a gesture of gratitude, Marion gifts John one of his cherished dogs, although Mildred adamantly refuses to allow the dog inside their home. Despite their contrasting circumstances, the two men forge a bond akin to that of father and son. Marion imparts his hunting knowledge to John, who yearns for a paternal figure in the absence of his father. Before long, the police stumble upon the crashed car submerged in the stream along with the damaged stash of whiskey. They also discover the vandalism inflicted upon the government-installed tank. Urging John to confess to the bootlegging operation, the police offer to drop the charges if he reveals Marion as the true culprit. However, John adamantly refuses to betray his newfound friend. Meanwhile, due to the authorities' suspicions, Arthur becomes wrongly implicated in the illegal whiskey trade. Witnessing government agents on his property, Arthur, harboring anti-government sentiments, fires his gun at them in an act of defiance. Following the shootout between Arthur and the government agents, several officers sustain injuries, prompting them to withdraw and devise a new strategy. Seizing the opportunity, Arthur manages to escape unnoticed. Meanwhile, Marion persists in his illicit whiskey transportation activities, traversing the state with his latest vehicle. However, during one of his runs, his car malfunctions, leaving him stranded with the illegal liquor as his sole company. The police apprehend Marion and charge him with bootlegging. Subsequently, he is sentenced to prison. As for Arthur, he is eventually apprehended and committed to a mental health institution due to his involvement in shooting police officers. 
Unaware of their fate, John remains oblivious to the developments surrounding Arthur and Marion, rendering him incapable of assisting them in any way. As time passes, John matures into a young man and realizes that he can no longer bear to reside in Tennessee. After a few years, upon returning home, he is greeted with the disheartening revelation that the entire town has been deserted, leaving behind a desolate landscape. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.